Testing the Authenticity of Recorded Evidence, Part 4. Forensic phonoscopic analysis must have a legal foundation. In Poland, that foundation is a Supreme Court decision from 1960 allowing recorded material to be submitted as evidence in criminal cases. The date may seem surprising, but the truth is, for 40 years, tape recordings have been used in Polish courts. Today, thanks to amendments in the law, all forms of recordings are allowed to be used as evidence. In 1960, and again the following year, the Supreme Court indicated three basic types of analyses which must be done so that such evidence could be useful in a court case. These include reproducing and transcribing the contents of such recordings, identifying the individual speakers whose voices are recorded, and checking the authenticity of the recordings. As far as individual identification, it must be said that everyone is able to recognize another person not seeing him and only hearing him. Thus we have a simple definition of the issue of identifying someone. If we have someone close to us, friends, family, co-workers, or someone known publicly, such as politicians, actors, radio and television announcers, or singers who are often interviewed. Sooner or later, somehow we all learn to recognize these individuals. We can even say that distinguishing singers while they are singing poses no problems. Any way you look at it, the problem of identifying individuals is a very important issue because a key question in a court case where such material exists is deciding whether the material concerns one person or another. Specifically, to answer if a given statement was made by Jan Kowalski or Joe Novak. To do this, we must perform quite complicated and laborious tests to identify a set of characteristics of a given person that will allow him or her to be precisely identified. The most common mistake with respect to such tests is the idea that opinions are issued on the basis of voice analyses. It's a popular misconception, but identifying a person by voice alone would be a fundamental error. Voice analysis concerns describing a range of parameters concerning the physical characteristics of speech and are technical parameters linked to a specific person, but are unfortunately subject to fluctuation, and so are not very stable. They include the frequency of larynx tone, the harmonic distribution of the tone, the resonance and quality of the voice. Those elements that all of us consider when recognizing a speaker without seeing him. Nevertheless, as I've said, these elements are a result of the anatomical structure of the vocal system. They are very much affected by diseases and accidents, from the shape of the larynx and even by breaking voices, which affects girls as well as boys, a fact not widely known. Danego mówcy z budowy anatomicznej ukształtowania aparatu mowy, 
However, these processes have an impact on the lability of these parameters. In addition, unfortunately, a person's emotional state is most commonly the basic factor that does not allow us to use just these parameters in forming an opinion. Because, and there has been a great deal of research done at our center as well, which shows the effect of one's emotional state on the physical voice parameters. It's been clearly shown that when we are upset and when we start to shout, our voices automatically go up and we speak less carefully. And so changes occur not only in our voices, but in the form of speech, and that affects other factors. We may strain our voices, which affects the condition of the vocal cords, which, in turn, affect the vocal parameters. It's something of a vicious circle. In any case, there can be drastic differences in the vocalizations of the same person if we analyze speech of that person in conditions of severe emotional stress and then extreme apathy and compare it to normal, spontaneous speech. W związku z tym wpływać na te wartości parametrów. Jest to taka, takie sprzężenie zwrotne, troszeczkę błędne koło. W każdym bądź razie drastyczna różnica występuje w obrębie tej samej osoby, jeżeli będziemy analizować wypowiedzi w silnym sta stanie silnego wzburzenia emocjonalnego, ewentualnie jakiejś takiej skrajnej apatii i normalnych, spontanicznych wypowiedzi. Tutaj też trzeba powiedzieć, że. It must also be said that since we cannot rely solely on physical voice parameters, a methodology had to be worked out which would allow a person to be objectively identified. Such a methodology was developed a long time ago, ever since opinions regarding tape recording were ruled admissible in court. It is fully in accordance with methodology used throughout the world, both in Europe and beyond. However, the countries with the greatest experience in this field are those that belonged to the Eastern Bloc. Of course, social, political, and economic norms were the main factors that stimulated the development of this type of analysis. We can take pride in the fact that here in Poland, we were the first to develop this method of identification by analysis of continuous speech. This method relies on analyzing person's speech rather than voiced alone. Voice is an additional factor. It can be helpful in corroborating or negating certain circumstances. However, we cannot rely solely on it. Because we were the principal originators of this method, laboratories established in other countries would come and visit Poland. At present, the situation has equalized. We are all on relatively the same level and possess generally the same technical resources. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Our equipment represents the highest worldwide standards and we remain leaders as far as technology and methodology are concerned. I w zasadzie nie zostajemy w tyle zarówno pod względem metodyki, jak i właśnie zaplecza technicznego za żadnymi krajami. The methodology of identification using continuous speech analysis is based on measurement of speech. What sort of factors are taken into consideration? Above all, things such as linguistic characteristics, phonetic characteristics, and finally, the physical voice parameters. 
Linguistic characteristics may seem to be rather unrelated to a person's individual characteristics, but a number of studies by researchers have proven that even linguistic characteristics can be very individualized. So, we analyze the vocabulary a person uses, the forms they prefer. Does the person, for example, prefer long, complex sentences? Are the sentences grammatically correct? Do they use certain words habitually? And what sort of words are they? Do they accept or reject certain suggestions or interjections made by other speakers? Do they have a tendency to keep making the same types of errors? If so, are the errors in manner of speaking, of form, or grammatical structure? We also analyze the phonetic side, such things as method of articulation, which is also subject to numerous factors. Not only the environment in which a person was brought up in, or where he lives now, because we all change over the course of our lives. But what determines these changes includes the structure of our vocal organs. That is why it takes considerable effort to overcome the limitations imposed by the anam anatomical structures. Most often, it is actors and television announcers who must deal with this problem by studying articulation and diction in order to eliminate or alter phonetic characteristics. Wyeliminować bądź podkreślić, zmienić, wyostrzyć pewne cechy właśnie między innymi fonetyczne. A cechy fonetyczne. Phonetic characteristics are nothing more than the method of producing individual phonemes, and each form of speech comprises of phonemes which, when analyzed individually, differ from phonemes in continuous speech by displaying a very individual phonetic context. And this is a very important factor. The range of characteristics which can be used to describe a given speech pattern is very individual and very stable. It is that group of characteristics on which the speaker has the least influence. Of course, people can try to change the way they speak and even the form of their speech, for instance, using short sentences, if they have a tendency to normally use long ones. But this is very difficult, and a person doing this has to struggle. The resulting speech is very unnatural, and the result is obvious. In attempting such an alteration, they cannot control such elements as, for example, where A is found on the vowel triangle, or what shape does the tongue assume in a given word? Is it a more nasal or less labial phoneme? Or what occurs when the phoneme appears next to a voiced versus an unvoiced phoneme? And does the person have certain tendencies in pronunciation? These are all very basic parameters, but they play a decisive role in the process of identifying a speaker on the basis of continuous speech analysis. If we have a recording that we are analyzing, and we must identify a given person, the first thing we must be aware of is that it is only a fragment of the way this person expresses him or herself. It is defined by the given context 
or situation and whether they know they are being recorded. Even things such as whether or not they are the authors of what they said. Is it something memorized or repeated after someone else or spontaneous? All these issues influence the manner of speaking and what we are going to analyze. Thus, the more characteristics of speech and articulation we are able to isolate, the easier it is to precisely identify a given individual. Of course, our goal is to identify someone categorically. To do so, we use several stages of analyses. Auditive evaluation is at the first level. This evaluation involves listening to a voice and doing a general qualification by recording samples of the voice of a person who is known to us and comparing it to the recording being analyzed to determine if, on the basis of the sound, the two voices are to some degree similar. This type of auditive evaluation is done by all of us on a daily basis. The difference between an average speaker or listener and an expert is that we do it very consciously. We know exactly what we are analyzing. The accent, intonation, pauses resulting from the need to take a breath or gather one's thoughts, or due to limitations in articulation. We analyze all the phonetic characteristics in a conscious manner. The average listener does the same thing, though in a narrower range and completely unconsciously. That is why sometimes we have difficulty telling a mother and daughter's voices apart, because our skills are developed only to a certain point and, not being aware of what we could use to tell them apart, we simply don't do it in everyday speech. In our laboratory, we go into detail, splitting the finest hairs, because we bear great responsibility for the opinions we issue. W naszym laboratorium właściwie rozstrząsamy i, i dzielimy włos na czworo. Jak we consider all these factors in order to defend against the charge that the auditive evaluation is subjective, which is an accusation often heard. Nie być posądzonym o to, że są to badania subiektywne, bo bardzo często się spotykamy właśnie z tego rodzaju zarzutem, że badania, szczególnie ocena audytywna jest badaniem subiektywnym. I'd like to underscore that subjective evaluations could be used to determine what someone thinks, or likes, or prefers. However, we describe what we find objectively. We have no influence on the manner in which a person says something. All we can influence is whether or not we are able to reveal it. The methods used to get to this reality, this revelation, must be varied in order to eliminate errors. On the other hand, we need to be sure of these results in equivocal situations. These most often occur because the quality of the recording is unsatisfactory, resulting from difficult acoustic conditions, locations with bad acoustics, or statements recorded using incorrect recording techniques. And so in analyzing linguistic and phonetic characteristics and the physical parameters of a given voice, we must rely on auditive evaluations of other experts and analyses using instruments. Auditive evaluations are repeated numerous times because a person is unable to identify all the characteristics requiring attention after only one listening. And so it is the longest stage in the process of attempting to identify a recorded voice, with the exception of gathering comparative samples, which also involves a detailed analysis of linguistic and phonetic characteristics in the material submitted in evidence, a process that ensures that the correct comparative materials are recorded.
które należy wyodrębnić, żeby umiejętnie prowadzić pobieranie materiału porównawczego. Dlatego, że należy zawsze We must always keep in mind that analyses to identify an individual are not always for the exclusive purpose of indicating guilt, but also serve to eliminate individuals. And so we need to know how to definitely prove that this is not the person. In summary, Auditory evaluations are a very important element in the process of identification of a person on the basis of analysis of continuous speech, repeated many times and verified by other listeners and experts. However, it is supported by instrument analysis, the topic of part five of our program.